One, two, three. Test, test, one, two, one, two. And now you can hear me as well. But you heard me without a microphone as well. So it's just for recording. Yeah, it's cool. So thank you very much. Let's start for joining and attending this presentation this time. Um, it's kind of a follow-up what we did before. Before I did a rough explanation of what Zev is, and now the follow-up is how to manage the whole stuff. Uh, I would like to talk about this manager dashboard. Um, same thing as before, if you're interested in just scan the QR code, you will directly redirect it to the link. It's hosted on GitHub, um, written in Reveal because someone asked me before, it's written in Reveal.js um, and it scales down to any device. I could do a separate presentation afterwards about this, this is amazing thing. So let's start. Today we would like to talk about self mentioned dashboard. Um, when I say we, I mean my lovely colleague Laura Paduano and myself, I'm, I'm Kai. Um, and yeah, just the content for today. Another quick introduction, um, just to let you know who we are, then some kind of history to get a better understanding about the background, where we're coming from. Um, therefore, we have to talk about open attic. Um, and yes, this has nothing to do with, it's not a specific part of a house, it's a different discussion. Uh, someone in Germany tried to find a cool name for a storage solution that could be complicated. So. Seems like German folks are not that good in finding English storage solution names. Um, that's how we ended up with an open attic. Um, second thing is the dashboard v1. Finally, we're switching to dashboard v2. And if the Wi Fi <laughs> will work, and I hope so, we'll have a live demo prepared. And more people joining. Welcome. Nice to have you. So let's start with a quick introduction. Um, I think I talked about myself already. Name is clear. Same thing like before. You can find me on OFTC in the separate uh, different channels. Um, we both are from Fulda or near, near B Fulda. It's in the middle of Hesia, middle of Germany. Um, somehow hidden our date of birth. Amazing. And once I updated the slide uh, or those slides, I figured out maybe it's not the best idea to write the hours down because then I figured out, oh man, think. I have the feeling I'm getting old because the hours are so many already. So maybe I will change this. So this is enough from an introduction and obviously we both are from Susie. Quick history to get a better understanding. Um, and for the history, as I said, I would like to start with the Openmatic. Um, cool name, what is it? Someone heard it maybe before. Um, Openmatic was founded in 2011, so quite some while ago. And initially, um, Open Attic looked like that. And what it was made for, it was made for managing just the local appliance storage piece of hardware to create some LVM shares on top, share it via NFS, iSCSI, SIFs, also Fiber Channel. I was proud of that one, Fiber Channel was possible. And you could create snapshots and all those things, but just on one on a single instance. Uh, later on, we ported and you were able to add another storage and we supported DRBD as well. You could create DRBD shares within the UI. That's how the whole thing started. So I would say um, a single unified web UI solution to storage uh, to manage just uh, one piece. Afterwards, th roughly two and a half, three years later, 2014, we added the initial Ceph support because we figured out, sounds like Ceph is a cool project. Maybe we should also do something in the UI as we have it already. And the first thing we've added was that. Mm, what is that? That's the visualization of the crush map. And if you've attended my talk beforehand, you know the crush map is the topology of the cluster and you can build it. That's cool. And we thought it was cool. And it's still in the current upstream version of Openmatic, but we modified just one thing. In the initial version, this was, this was possible to edit this crush tree and to add new rules to the crush map. And you could also track and drop every entry into, in this tree. And then you could just click on apply. And that's it. No further notification, nothing. Just we thought that's, that's cool to modify the crush map. But we figured out that people, customers, whoever uh, will use it and they will change something, click on apply and then they are kind of screwed. 
and then they call you, why the hell is my cluster stuck and I can't use it anymore and it's busy almost 100%. That's when we realized, okay, we make it a read-only mode. Uh, we remove the edit functionality and that's how we end up today. Um, what we currently have in mind is to rework it or redesign it completely to have more or less like a wizard-based solution where you could create new rules and then you get informed um, how many data will be reshuffled, for example, if you apply those rules to your cluster. Um, are you really, really sure? Please, I don't know, um, kind of contact your administrator, your boss, and someone else before you apply that. After that, two years later, um, the initial collaboration started with Suzy. And with Suzy, once we um, started that, we added some initial graphing, uh, visualization of the Ceph cluster, some really basic stuff. And only a few months later, in November, obviously, um, we were the first acquisition ever made by Zuzi. Um, I'm still not 100% sure if they've just tested us for a few months and if this was just a, a trial. It's okay, we give them some money, we test them. Um, is the team really a good idea or should we buy them or not? And then in November, finally, they didn't bought us. That's not legal in Germany. They bought the project and usually, I don't know, surprisingly, we are now part of Susie. I know how this belongs. Um, here's a picture of the people. Laura was already there. Um, you are almost there from the beginning, right? Um, so it joined, I don't know, a few months after we initially started in 2011. Um, and then since 2017, we're focusing on Ceph only. So since Open Attic version 3.x, we focused on Ceph only. The reasons are really easy, because beforehand we supported multi-distros like Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, we built several packages and added all the functionalities. Now, being part of a bigger company um, with some kind of a roadmap, uh, with a product behind, yeah, the problem is we were still just nine, nine, ten developers at least, and supporting all those different distributions plus adding the whole features they told us yeah, it wasn't doable. That's why we traded off the multi distro support and also the local storage management. So we removed the whole part. So there's nothing left in the current version anymore. That's how it ended up. So the current, uh, current Obmatic uh, version 3.x looks like that. This already includes um, Grafana um, into the UI and the backend or the data that Grafana is gathering is stored in a time series database called Promisos. Um, and that's completely automate, automatically deployed via DeepSea. If you use the salt-based solution that we have, um, this whole stuff is set up automatically. So we talked about Obmatic. That's the rough history. Now we're talking about Dashboard V1. That's another, another thing to understand the whole full picture. Initially, with Ceph Luminous, there was the so-called uh, Ceph Manager Dashboard added. And we call it the Dashboard V1. Um, you were able to see some the Ceph has some initial logs, some performance counters, um, also a list of OSDs, which was quite nice, um, as well as yeah, images, mirroring, all the stuff. Backend was written in Python and used Cherry Pie, and the front end was written in Rivet.js. That's um, how the whole thing started. But uh, this yeah, that's just a, just a picture how it looks like, uh, or it looked like. Um, it wasn't. Remember that it's important later, it was in PLEC. Just keep that in mind, I said it. So I will come to back to that later. It's in PLEC. Um, that's how it looked like. And after Luminous was released, um, they started to adding new features. RGW details, a monitoring list, some perf counters, as well as a browser to browse all the configurations available within the SAF cluster, which was quite nifty. The problem was, Dashboard V1 has some limitations. First of all, it was a read or still was a read-only dashboard, so you couldn't manage anything. You could take a look at something, but if you would like to create an RBD device, share something, that wasn't possible. No built-in authentication, neither at least a username or a password, doesn't matter, nothing. Everyone could just connect to it. And from our perspective, a limited functionality was RivetJS. That's our point of view. That's how we ended up with the next one, and the one I would like to hand over to Laura. Thanks. So um, this is about the dashboard V2. Um, 
So um, it started in January 2018 that um, there was a general discussion about the old dashboard and the future of that dashboard. And um, our idea was to contribute the part that was already in Open Attic um, as a new dashboard, so dashboard v2. And um, we discussed that with uh, Sage and John. And so we decided to create a proof of concept. And um, yeah, then we uh, decided to use Angular. The other dashboard uh, used another technology, but um, since we already used Angular for Open Attic, we decided to, to go with Angular as well. And um, yeah, at the end of February, around there, um, the, uh, we created a development branch for the dashboard v2, where we kind of migrated all of our work from the open attic, from the old open attic, uh, to that development branch. So we could create a pull request against uh, Ceph with a new dashboard replacement. And um, yeah, on March uh, 6th, uh, we our um, yeah, our version of the dashboard uh, was was merged, and um, there we had the um, feature com feature parity with the dashboard v1, and yeah, there we uh, submitted over 150 pull requests, and 122 were merged, and um, since we've merged that first version of our dashboard. We already um, submitted over 170 pull requests and um, more than 140 pull requests have been merged. And um, yeah, currently there's a lot of groundwork going on. Um, we have to build the foundation for the, for the new dashboard. And um, here's a, an overview of the dashboard, what's already there and what we use. Um, in the backend we have Python and uh, we use Cherry Pie. And as I mentioned, we use Angular 5 for the web UI. And yeah, because we already used it in Open Attic, so we are really familiar with that. And um, currently we have a username and, username and password for, for the login. Um, yeah, and as mentioned, we have the features uh, that are in dashboard v1 already in, in our dashboard for the, for the master of Ceph. And um, yeah, there are additional management features integrated, but also some we are still working on. So um, what we have in the back end, uh, what we um, build on top of the dashboard v1 version um, is a task management. Um, we have a browsable REST API, but that is also currently um, being changed again with a new replacement. Um, we have RBD management. We have RGW bucket and user management and uh, Ceph pool management um, that is also um, in the front end, for example, the, the Ceph pool management and the RBD management. We have the RGW management in the front end, um, erasure coded pool profile management, and the task manager as well. Um, you have just, yeah, you have a, a window where you could see um, running tasks because if a task takes longer, then yeah, just creating something and you can instantly see it. Then you have a, a small pop-up window where you can see the progress of that task. So um, just to inform the user that is something that, that takes longer and is uh, going on. We have tooltips. So if you go over with a mouse over some, some uh, items, you get additional uh, information about it. And um, we also have a usage bar component to um, yeah, show some, some graphs uh, in the UI. And what's next is um, the Grafana proxy. Um, that is something for the, which is being developed for the back end. So we can then integrate Grafana into the front end. Um, still, Ceph pool management is in progress. So we can edit pools, for example. Um, what is also in progress is for the back end. Uh, currently cluster wide Ceph OSD management. So we can set, set flags for OSD, which uh, are then applied cluster wide. Um, we have a settings editor that is also a work in progress. Um, that is a, a page where you can see all settings from the cluster that are um, yeah, active currently. Um, the plan is to have that as an, an editor so you can um, change Ceph configuration settings in, in that page. 
Um, also, um, translation, localization is a topic, so we have um, the dashboard in different languages. Uh, currently, um, Spanish is um, being, it is being translated to Spanish. Um, yeah, we have also German. And um, yeah, if you, or if someone wants to, to contribute uh, with localization, that is also something we appreciate. Um, and what's also next is uh, user permissions, so you can um, set user permissions for example for add actions or edit actions um, if you want to create something or if you want to delete something so we wanted to um, the idea was to have that per page so you can allow a user to go to the pools page and create a pool or you can yeah just unset that and uh, the user is not really allowed to to um, do something on that page except for yeah kind of read only um, that is also something that is uh, being worked on. So I don't know if we have luck f with the, wi yeah, with the Wi-Fi. That's it. Um, one thing maybe worth to mention is um, right now what we're trying to achieve is um, we try to convert or to reach feature parity with the old Openmatic. So all the functionalities that we have had the management functionalities, we would try, we, right now we try to port them into the new upstream included dashboard. Um, there are some problems um, that we're currently facing because we have to choose an orchestrator somehow or make it more or less modular that we can, can support multiple deployment tools like Ceph Ansible, uh, various shell scripts, whatever, and DeepSea, for example, salt based, our salt based version from SUSE, so to support all of them. Um, and that's what we're currently trying to achieve. And as, as soon as we achieve that, um, we will add more and more functionality on top. But from our end, the cool stuff is that as soon as you now install Ceph Mimic, you will get the dashboard by default. And there's no third party dashboard needed anymore. And this will um, definitely improve for Nautilus, which is planned to re be released by the beginning of first quarter next year. So, just as a heads up, let's take a look if my Wi-Fi is working or not. Ta -da. Yay! Should I press F5? I don't know. I'll, I'll just show you the login page because we have one. And if the Wi-Fi is not working anymore, it's awesome, right? So, this is how, what I can show you. Um, let me try to log in. In my in former talks, I did, a, I did the, the bad joke that our old login screen looked completely the same. The only thing that was different was the logo and the name. It was Welcome to Openmatic instead of Welcome to Ceph, and the logo was different. And in a former um, presentations, I just showed this as the newest thing that we've developed, and that's it. So that's cool. Let's try to log in. Please, please. Yeah, amazing. And one thing to mention, I mentioned it. You know what? Yay, exactly. And this already started several conversations. I, I, I hate those conversations, but there are, there are several conversations because it seems like a lot of people like, like the old black color, and I know that someone is already working on a theming PR just to make it possible to change the colors of the yeah, UI, because why not? That's the most important part that we should work on. Um, Obviously, given that we are now based on the old, or that we try to re-implement the old dashboard, um, it looks totally familiar. We have an, at least an overview overall health status. Um, you get, how, get a list of how many monitors do you have, the quorum, how many OSDs, um, a list of pools, then the usage bar with an over, this cool little tooltip, that's something that we've added, that wasn't part of the old uh, dashboard we won. Um, and then something that open edit, um does not have is those logs. So you directly get a cluster log and an audit log from the cluster. So you can click on and get direct information from the cluster. So this part is already ahead of what OpenEdit is capable of. Let's switch to the cluster um, topic or cluster tab. Um, there we have several tabs, for example, the hosts. Um, there you have just a list of hosts, including the services. There's nothing more in it yet. Um, this will change as soon as we have the orchestrator and we can talk to the nodes and we can then um, interact with them and do specific operations on them. Right now it's just not possible. From clusters we have a list of monitors, so at least you get a broader general overview. Um, then you get a list of um, monitors. You would get those monitors which are not in Quorum, 
um, because they are down or have other several problems. Um, you get a list of open sessions. I have six, six things connected. It's amazing. Um, you get their addresses, and then you can click, for example, on a specific mon, mon A, um, and then you get some detailed performance counters from this mon. Most of, most of them are empty because this is a development system, um, a development branch, and I just started the vStore cluster, so there's nothing behind. OSD tab, um, we can, can list the OSDs, um, all of them. Then we added those usage things, the read write bytes. I'm not quite sure if you've seen that they update automatically. Um, same for write bytes. Um, you get the status of them, and underneath, you get those OSD map. So you get some details um, from the OSD specifically. Um, as well as you can get details for the metadata. Um, same for performance counters. So you get, get some data for this specific OSD ID zero, um, what was collected, and then the histogram. This was part of dashboard we one was implemented. So maybe we have to redesign that. But as I said, we converted it. So that's for USD. Um, a cool thing, that's what we mentioned with the configuration browser, and I hope my Wi-Fi is still working. Seems like, seems like not, I don't know. At least I, would, I wanted to show you. Um, if it's not possible, I will explain what it does. Um, it will list unknown error, that's amazing. Um, it will list all configuration items um, within your cluster. And the cool thing is, you can, can change the level. So you have at least a basic level, an advanced, and a development level. So in the basic level, you get, I don't know, if you select an OSD, you get four diff different variables you can change or four values. If you change to advanced, you get, I don't know, 50, and development 100. So that's the idea. And what we're currently working on is the um, editor of this configuration um, list that we have right here. But plus, um, we would like to show the default, how the default looks like, and then mark those you have changed manually, mark them red or highlight them, so that you know, OK, I changed those variables, and maybe because of given reasons, and then you can also adapt and change. That's cool for life, though. That's always the case, right? Seems like it's not, uh, not, uh. I had Wi-Fi once. I still have, oh, my VPN dropped because of reasons. Let me give it a try to reconnect. Don't we have someone here from, from SUSE Infra who can fix the, uh, just kidding. Let me see if I, I can, I can, right, let me create an internal ticket. Yeah, that's possible. Please send me an email that the exchange or whatever server is down. Yes, of course, that's a great idea. Chicken and egg. Um, it's connecting. Do I, ha do I have Wi-Fi here? Or do I have uh, at least you have? Let me, let, me let me create a hotspot. We are flexible, right? We are kind of agile, so I create a hotspot. I don't care. Let me change. Let me check, and then now I have edge wire. That would be amazing. Uh, let me connect. Uh, and let me check. Yeah, my hotspot is working. A round of applause is amazing. Let me check if it's still if it's working or if it's not. And there is the configuration editor. <laughs> or oh, no, just browser, sorry. <laughs> I'm back. Thank you, mobile device in 21st century. Um, this is how the, that's what I try to, what I try to explain. This is how the um, general, um, yeah, overview of the configuration uh, management looks like. Um, let me, let me select something. Uh, for example, I click on OSD. As I said, I had a level um, of basic. Uh, I just get two. Option I could change cluster address, public address, and then if I'm more serious, I can change to advanced, for example, and then I get more details. And there's another page you can go to and get more information. And there are several ones, be sure. So if you're really serious, you can do a lot of really cool stuff here. So let's switch to pool. Um, we are listing all the pools that we have uh, within the cluster. Um, and also, we are listing the, the details of the pools underneath. So, how many, how's the PG, PG nums or how many PGs this pool have, for example, 
or um, also some performance counters. Um, yeah, that's for at least that's for for pools. Um, one thing I can show what we add from a manage, management um, yeah, perspective is um, within Plog, the Plog tab, we're now able to create RVD images. And one thing we've, we've added as well um, is the possibility to create snapshots of those RVDs. So um, if I click on snapshot, I, here I have an overview of those snapshots. I just created a test snap. And this snap, for example, right now is protected. And if I want to unprotect it, I can click on, then you'll see, okay, it's a long running task, takes a bit longer, get a notification, and it's unprotected. So that's something we, we've developed. And if you want to, for example, create a new one, you can click on add. Um, let me new OS C R B D. Hey, that's cool. New OS C R B D 200 max. Um, you can also change the, the features. Um, for example, and here we have some kind of dependencies included. If you have seen OpenMedic before, this was there already the fact, but um, for example, object map um, requires exclusive log. So as soon as I remove exclusive log, all of the others were are automatically unchecked. And as soon as I click on exclusive log, I can turn on object map and fast this again as well. Let me create this. Uh, my hotspot is working quite well. And there it is, my new OSD RVD, for example, and now I can create snappy, um, create a snapshot, and then it will create a snapshot on top of this RVD. That's, for example, a functionality that we have already added that's ahead of V1. File system. Uh, no, there are more uh, I can show you. Um, there is the mirroring in the iSCSI page. This was already part of V1, but given that I neither configure the mirror nor iSCSI, um, I can show you empty lists. Uh, so as soon as you have, uh, have a mirror configured or an iSCSI gateway, you have something. But given that usually what we do is just checking out the current master and then we're starting the restart cluster, which, set up, which sets up a bare minimum cluster for development purposes, um, yeah, it's just overhead to deploy everything. File system, um, we are able to, to show the file system, so the CFFS on top. Um, they can also, there you can also list the clients, um, how many which are connected, and also the ranks of the clients. So one thing that's maybe interesting in, or you are interested in, is as soon as you have more than just one, two, three clients, you maybe want to know who of my clients is the one who is, I don't know, training down my whole cluster all the time because he's totally freaking out and doing some weird things. So there you get a list of reads and writes at least for specific nodes. Um, 10 minutes before our talk, I figured out that I can show you something else, the object gateway, but not the object gateway I wanted to show you, but it's one thing that we've added, and that those are those hints and notes. Um, so if something is not working, we try to add some hints or some guidelines how to configure it, and here you can see, I'm not quite sure if, we, if you can read it, um, there you get an information um, and a direct link to the documentation how to configure um, the object gateway, for example. Um, I just have seen this five minutes before before I started my talk. Seems like my RGW crashed on my laptop. Um, maybe it's not the best system to host a Ceph cluster. Um, but just that you know, we're trying to make it as easy usable as possible. Um, when you click on the link, just that you have seen that, click on open a new, pay, a new tab. This will directly redirect you, for example, dashboard plugin. How do you configure enabling the object gateway management front end? within documentation. So no need to just, I don't know, walk through the whole documentation, use Google, um, or at least read the documentation. I know people hate to read documentations. Background task, just to show you that, um, that's what I did before. I created, for example, a snapshot um, on top of this new OSD RBD called Snappy, and there you can see all the tasks that I've done and also the recent notifications where I've seen this error we got before, those are listed here, so we ha have a clue what was going on. That's a general quick walkthrough. As you have seen, if someone has seen the OpenMedic UI beforehand, what's missing, of course, is the iSCSI management, what's missing is NFS ma management, and the whole pool management, for example. As Laura pointed out, is a uh, pull request already created, uh, working on it, and for the whole management stuff, our, all our hope goes to into John, that it's 
done sooner than later. So that's how an upstream project works. So, but um, to be totally honest, I'm really, really happy that we were able to, to convince our internal, I would say, managers that we can, would, can push efforts in upstream and that Sage at least allowed us to do so. So now we have roughly between 10, 11 upstream developers working on the dashboard. And what's even better, beforehand we tried to build up a community with OpenMedic, which was rather complicated because the contributions to OpenMedic were quite low, or I would say not existent at all. And this completely changed since we initially merged the upstream pull request into Ceph. So we now have uh, folks from Red Hat working on the dashboard as well. We get new pull requests, we get fixes. This is totally amazing. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, I don't know, make this UI as usable as possible. And therefore, we need your feedback. So um, please use it. Just take a look at it. I know their fun management functionality is almost missing right now, but initial feedback is helpful. And if it's, I want the black theme back, something like that, just feedback that we know, okay, what could be improved, what is missing, maybe just contact us, that would be helpful. Um, and with that, that um, I think we're at the end and we're kind of ask questions, right? Let's switch back to here. I, I don't, if someone, someone has questions about the demo, I, would, I will not full screen this presentation now again. So um, now it's question time. If you have questions, ask them. So you want people to test it out, etc. How much of this is in Tumbleweed, or would you have to then do a git pull from upstream to then try and test the new one, or do you have a development repository within OBS that people can take a package from, test it, and provide feedback? Um, currently, we have um, within the within OPS, or we try to be as um, yeah up to date as possible. So we have packages, most recent packages for Luminous, and we already have packages for Mimic. Um, the Mimic was branched off two weeks ago or so. So we have current current uh, packages. What we don't have is up to date up to date right now packages from masters so we don't build masters for every change so we build them regularly i don't know once or twice a week something like that but not every day so if you want the up to date right now then you would have to check out from github more questions so we i think we have time left so yeah questions or is everyone totally confused or you can ask a general question if you would like. Otherwise, I don't want to steal your time. We can also wrap up. So, last chance. Then, thank you very much for attending this presentation, and thanks to Laura for uh, helping me with. Having you.